What's up guys, Mike the Coder here. Today we're gonna to go over the next problem set of a palindrome reorder. So uh, this this was a problem that I actually skipped, but uh, then I'm gonna come back to it, and now I'm back to it, yeah. So yeah, let's actually go over this. So given a string, your task is to reorder its letters in such a way that it becomes a palindrome. So uh, what does that mean? That means that, um, essentially is that a palindrome is a string that contains the original string forwards and backwards, okay? So our first input example was A, 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 C, A, C, A, C, B, C, A, okay? So you have A, 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 C, A, C, B, A, okay? And then what they did was they, uh, essentially what they did was they reordered it in a way so that now it's backwards, it's forward and backwards. So it's now a palindrome. So as you can see, this, uh, C, uh, their output, and your final output is this is this uh, this string, and if we were to uh, I'm gonna show you guys in Paint real quick. Uh, I'll show you guys in Paint real quick to show you guys what I mean by this. But if we were to um, if we were to if we were to what did I type here? Yeah, okay. So if we were to take the new string here and we try to check if it's a palindrome. See, as you can see here, the first letter is equal to the last letter. Right, and then all these letters are this the, the second letter is equal to the second last letter, right? And all these letters are is a palindrome because the second letter is also a mirror image of the third letter, right? The third letter is also the same, and then the fourth letter is also the same, and then the final letter of B is also the same. So essentially, what we're trying to do is um, we're trying to reorder the original string A A A A C A. Uh, C, B, A, to an actual palindrome. And if there is no solution, as a no solution, we print out no solution because that means that uh, it's actually, there's no solution for it, right? Because then, uh, essentially there's a, it, it cannot be reordered in a palindrome. So I'm gonna show you what I did, um, just to show you the code what I did. Essentially, is this is not that hard, hard of a problem. Um, what I did was basically, I just, I kept track of each of the character and the, uh, of the occurrences of each character. So like if uh, you don't have to do what I did, but this is this is my solution. So so here I had the original string of a, -A, -A, -A. so let's look at the original string, not the output, not this output, but the original string, right? And what I did was I just kept track of every character, the occurrence of every character. So a has um, this a Right, this A has uh, three, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, has six, six of these, right? Six of these. I'm gonna actually just type, I'm gonna type. Okay, so A has about six, has six. Yeah, I'm just gonna type actually, this, this, this takes too much time. Yeah, so A has about six, um, B has, let's see how many, how many values does B have? Uh, it has one, right? And then uh, C has two. C has two, right? So here we have A has one, two, three, four, five, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. B has one and then C has two. So what I did was to essentially build my new palindrome is I, I just kept track of um, each character from adding each character to the, uh, uh, two strings, right? I have two strings and I just kept track of adding each character to uh, th the front and the back, right? And then as we keep going that, we're going to just decrease the number of occurrences of each character until we use all the characters in the string. And then uh, we could just check if it's a palindrome in, in the end, right? So here, if like, if I had um, first character, there's six, right? I'm going to have six, I have A adding into the front. Then I'm going to have like A also add into the back, right? So this six would be decremented to like four. So this would become four, right? Because... I used up two characters, right? I used up two. And then I could have like um, C. I'm going to add C to the front also. And then I'm going to add C to the back of A, right? C, C and then A here, right? And then so on and so forth, right? And then this C basically gets decremented to, um, to zero. Right? C becomes zero. And uh, yeah, we just do the same thing over and over until we get to, uh, for like all the even occurrences, we just do the same thing until we uh, until they're all used up. And the last odd occurrences, I just put that in the middle. 
right? So now this four gets decremented. So let's add all the values of a four. So let's do that. Um, yeah, so we could do like a, we could do a, a, C, A, dot, 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 A, C, A, right? So that's a forward and back. And then um, this A becomes decremented again by two, right? Because we added at the front and the back. So now this becomes two. And then we'll do this again. So let's take this two out and then do it again. A, C, A, A, dot, 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 uh, A, A, C, A, right? And then, um, yeah, so then this two becomes zero. And then the last one is just gonna be B, right? So let's uh, decrement this last odd value to be, remove it, uh, move the occurrences of B. And then we add that into our final value in the middle. A, C, A, A, B, A, A, C, A, okay? A, C, A, B, A, A, C, A. A, C, A, A, B, A, C, A, yeah. Okay, so then in the end, this is going to be a palindrome if you reconstruct it. And if you can't do this, like it just doesn't work. You could also just recheck if it's a palindrome in the end, because that's just going to take a one one loop to go through it and check if it's a palindrome again. And if it's not, then yeah, then there's definitely no solution. So yeah, that's basically the, my solution on how I coded this up. And I could show you the code now because uh yeah. So yeah. Um, I'll show you the code. So first here, the first part is a solved. Um, I pass in the string. So, okay, I'll, I'll start in main. So here I read the string S and then I do C and S. Then I call solved. Okay, so solved is going to just uh, do all the reordering of the string. Okay, so here um, I create a variable of N is just equal to the size of the string because I don't know. Uh, I don't, I'm just too lazy to type in S dot uh, size over and over again. Okay. So here, my map O represents uh, the occurrences of each character. So I'm going to map the character with the uh, number of occurrences of each character. And that's basically what this uh, frequency thing is doing. I'm just keeping a track of the frequency of each time a character shows up. So this builds A6, then B1, then C2. So that's what this does. Okay, so that's what this for loop does. String W is just like the, the, uh, the front string, right? The front string that I'm building. So that this is the front string of A, right? Whatever in, is value in the uh, in A, so A, then A C, then A C A, right? That's the front string that I'm building. Uh, that's what this W is. So here, um, here what I'm doing is uh, I'll go through every single uh, character in A. Uh, wait, actually not character. Uh, yeah, every single occurrence is in the in my occurrences list for character and the integer, right? In our map. And I check is uh, is the occurrence odd, okay? So if it's the occurrence of odd, then I'm gonna put that first. So uh, for some reason I just did odd first. Um, you don't have to. It really doesn't matter if you did it uh, do odd or even or whatever. But yeah, the string s uh, string w actually represents the, the the middle one. Then I think I coded this really strangely. But yeah, uh, string string w string w my, my not s string w represents the string in the middle. So that actually represents the uh, my bad. Uh, it represents B, right? Um, so I have a I have a string B, a uh, string W that that is the middle value of the string that has all, only the odd the odd occurrences. That I put that in there. Okay, that's what I have in the middle. Okay. Now string begin is the one where we're talking about of uh, actually uh, actually having adding the occurrences for each of these. So the string begin is A and then A C and A C A. That's what string begin is. So I'm building up like building up the uh, the string in the front. Okay, so for that, I loop through all the occurrences of my map, X and O. O represents the occurrences of uh, all the character. Then here, what I'm doing is I'm just gonna loop through to the middle size. Um, I'm not, I'm a, yeah. What I'm basically doing is I'm just going to loop through um, through half of it. So like, if, uh, if I'm going through like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? If I have six here, I'm just going to add three A's in the front, right? Because uh, if you build the string in the front, you could add like, um, if you have six, right? You could add like three A's in the front and then th three three B uh, three A's in the back also, right? Like as you could see here in our string occurrences, right? Uh, building our string, um, if it's even, we could just add that uh, half of it, 
in the front and then half of it in the back. Like as you can see here, like A, A, C, A, A, C, A, right? A, C, A, A. So here are A's. We had three A's in the front and we had three A's in the back. So essentially what we could do is we could just have um, um, loop through half of it, half of the occurrences and add those, that number of characters in the front, okay? So here, essentially what this is doing is that it's gonna go through the, the map and just add half of the occurrences, half of the occurrences for the even values. And then, uh, yeah, so then begin plus equal to x dot first, which is gonna be the, the character the character of our of each of the care of the, the values in the map and then i'm just going to uh decrement the number of occurrences at that character so that occurrences at x dot first gets decremented so then each time um yeah each time when we go through it we're just going to add half of the letters for each of these first in the beginning and then half of the rest in the end so that's for the beginning right for the beginning okay and in the end we do the exact same thing for the string end we do the exact same thing as what we did here in the beginning. What we're doing is just, we're just gonna take half of the letters of the occurrences from the remaining characters of the occurrences. So here we have, um, remember I had three A's in the beginning, right? And then uh, I think I had three A's and then I had two, uh, three A's in the beginning, three A's in the end. And then I put, uh, uh, since C is equal to two, there will be one C in the beginning and one C in the end, right? So here, as we could see here, we had three A's in the beginning and one C. And then here we have three A's in the end and one C. So that's what this does is that this end does the exact same thing as beginning, but what it's doing is it's just going to build off of that, uh, build off of the remaining characters occurring that are even, whose number of occurrences are even, and build them off and uh, and add them into the, our end string. Okay, so now that we added all the things in the end string, I reversed it. And the reason why is because I should have done um, end equals x dot first plus end like adding it into the front but instead i added it into the back and because of that i i just reversed it because i was too lazy to add into the front but uh if you want to it's better to just uh, like append things to the front so that they're actually like mirrored together but yeah and then in the end yeah i just reversed it so then so then now they're actually like mirrored together right so we would have a uh, acaa in the front and a uh aaca that's mirrored which is also reversed in the back. Then what I do is I, I build a new string called result with the beginning, then the middle, and then the end. So the beginning is going to have like uh, the string of a uh, three A's and one C, and then the end is going to have three A's and one C also, right? And then the middle is just going to have one B. It's just going to be all the, the characters that had odd values. All the characters that had odd values, you're going to put that in the middle, and then that'll be your answer. Okay, and then what we do is we check if it's a palindrome. So if it's a palindrome, then we just print out our result. Otherwise, we print out uh, no solution, and that's the basically the gist of the problem. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I, I had to make this video pretty quick. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.